Okie dokie. <clears throat> a little bit of a surprise. Normally, I do not stream ever on Tuesday. But today, I figured, hey, what the heck, why not? Let's try this and see where we can go today. Wasn't planning on it in the first place. I'm here now. Now, let's see where we can go. Um, it's all fine. It's all good. I'm not going to stream for hours today, probably. Don't even know how long I will, because I was pretty tired today, but let's see. Let's let's get some stuff going. Um, and I was thinking, started that already a little bit, to make a, a little bit of a, a dragon um, here. Pretty small. Not done yet, obviously. Might up the size a little bit. Not sure about that either. But yeah, you know, you have to do something to get the stuff going. Wow, that is really wide. Photoshop for a second. Oh, we don't want to do that there. We saw something that we could use, maybe it was different, but we want to something usable to make what we want to do ourselves, just based on that. Not completely the same, but a little bit of an idea of what to make for our dragon, because I'm, I'm good with making it, but not that fast. I also need to have some inspiration. So basically, let's go from there and see what we will make, right? Usually you would go for a tail around here somewhere, no? I don't want him to be too big. I also don't want him to be small. Doesn't have to be a tiny guy, but or lady in this case. Sorry, it's not a guy at all. So it should be something like this. And we can go like up there to get a little bit of a body going. I'm making something pretty simple. I'm not, I'm not thinking here uh, about going super high detail or anything like that. Just to have something that is better than having a capsule standing there, uh, which you don't want because capsules are nice for a bit, but after a while you get really bored of looking at them. So you don't really want to have them. At least I don't. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but it's not my favorite thing to look at. So um, let's try not to... Uh, to have to look at it too long. Yeah. Get some, uh, some little bit of dragon look going the way we want to. So, I think I'm going to make it much bigger. I feel that this is too clipped, basically too small. Dragon look much good. It's way too thick, of course. So let's go. Any more like that? That looks more already like a tail, but the wings are not like I would would do it myself. Basically, see if I fill it up. Let's see if it looks anywhere near okay, um, or that I want to make it better afterwards because that is obviously going to be the goal to make it as good as possible you don't have to make it perfect it's just a jam game it's not like we're gonna um, gonna basically uh, make it for a huge audience it does kind of look like a dragon if i look in my preview not too awesome but also not too terrible 
32 by 32 is what you should look at. So basically this is what we want. Uh, and for that, from this, we could um, animate basic things, not too hard. Just make it walk a little bit or something like that, uh, which, which is really helpful. Um, yeah. No idea if anybody would be watching today, because no, but normally I'm not streaming at all on, on this day. So I can imagine if nobody would want to watch or is watching in this day, because yeah, why would you, right? There's uh, normally nothing that I do on this day. I'm thinking maybe I can start with a like an idle animation. Otherwise, I will just maybe transform this a little bit to make it bigger. I'm not sure. Could have some details. I'm not sure. Maybe a tooth or some color differences here. So it looks a little bit more interesting. Hmm. I think that we can do something like that, like maybe this. Look nice, no? This basically should be like a horn, so I'm thinking I could make it a little higher, possibly. You can actually see that it's a horn, or like maybe put it like, like that. Makes it more like a horn. Hey, Patrick, thank you for joining me today. I wasn't sure if anybody would join me at all today because I normally do not stream on Tuesdays. <laughs> this is totally unexpected also for me. I was just like, eh, maybe let's uh, see if I can make something uh, and, and do something for the, the... Hey, Vibes makes, <laughs> makes games. What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. Come in. That's always nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, uh, to make some progress today on, um, well, replacing our capsule with something that looks remotely like a dragon, uh, so we can at least have a bit more of a vibe that we want to, want to use. Maybe I can replace it with some, some simple graphics today to, to actually have a little bit of a, an idea of what my game could look like. And, and just because of that, I started creating this little dragon. I kind of like that it looks a little bit cute. It's not too too heavy, too uh, too much on the I don't know on the detailed side. I decided for this I'd make it like a maximum of, of thirty two by thirty two. You made the texture of my model. Want to see it? It's on my Twitter. If that's fine with you. sure, that's fine with me. I permit links, so if you want to share be sure to do so and if you're okay with me sharing it with the group then i will just also pull it into the into the stream so you guys can see it oh you got that oh, okay <laughs> we put some elevator music in the meantime <laughs> i never have music in my stream maybe i should have a look at that anyway um ads are unfortunate but they do help the stream so it's it's a necessary evil, I would say, basically, because you cannot really avoid it sometimes. It really is, um, ah, you got back. So just a simple ad. That's not too long. That's okay. Um, I'm glad you're back. Thinking if I want to put some more detail into his live belly, like more like a scale or something like this, like if I put it like this, looks more like he has scales, right? Yeah, maybe, and... That's too high, maybe. This video is a long time no see, that's for sure. And well, that would be normally long, even longer time no see, because usually I do not stream on Tuesday, as you know. So it's quite nice that people are actually coming in. Wasn't expecting anyone, basically, because yeah, normally if you don't stream on that day, a lot of people don't know that they should come in and have a look. So thank you for joining me today, and I'm very happy you are here. Uh, I was also streaming yesterday. Yesterday I was uh, starting with a prototype for my uh, game jam game, Echoes of Fire, as I call it, which is a little bit of a game jam game that is going to be accessible. So um, there's an accessible, uh, it's called the Access Reset Game Jam. Quite a mouthful, I have to really think about it. But when I see my model that I remade the t my texture of and I post it on Twitter, yeah, 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 that's fine. Like, uh, um, you, you were just going to an ad, but I said, yeah, sure. 
Uh, I allow links, so if you have something nice that you want to show us, uh, I will definitely uh, show it. And if you're okay with me showing it in the stream, I will just drag it over so people can see it. <clears throat> Life's been busy and a bit chaotic mentally, but I'm at least doing better for the first time in a long while. So you're okay with me showing it in the stream? Because normally I would open the link on another screen. But if you're okay with me showing it, then I will just drag it. In. It's the monkey, right? Uh, we made the texture of the chimp, the fabric for my game, Fabric Explorer, and it looks cool, that one. Can I name the dragon for 1K? You can name the dragon if you want to, but as you can see, there is a name for it so far. It's called Arivia. Be why is it called Arivia? Well, for that, I need to show the itch.io page of this game jam. Um, so let me look it up. So that first, and then I will go down uh, and show the other one. Here, the judges are named Slightless Combat, Little Motak, Erevia, Taria, Rathers, and the Wobbly Gamer. And if there's one name that speaks to me as <clears throat> this could actually be a dragon, it's Erevia. It sounded really cool, and I was like, that could be, that is going to be my main character, my dragon. But... Hey, I'm open for suggestions if you want to name a different, or maybe you want to name another character. There, there's there's no redeem at the moment, I think, for 1K uh, to to change the name of a dragon There's um, <laughs> or the name of a character. There is, um, if, you, if you like that sort of thing, there is a way to get yourself as an NPC or somebody you love as an NPC in my Gaia game. For that, you need to go visit my Kofi page, and I'm pretty sure you can find that uh, either linked already on my Twitch page, and otherwise, I'm pretty sure it will pass by every now and then in my uh, in my chat, and you can choose that. If you have the money for it, might be nice to see yourself in the game, and I can make a pixel art version of you or one of the persons you love or an animal, and depending on how much you would donate for that, I might even animate it. I don't know that. I'm not good at animating yet, so you might want to go for a lower amount and just say, like, put me on as a poster or something. <laughs> I still need to learn a lot of stuff about animation. Just being fair about that. But I'm pretty sure I can do it because, uh, you know, I couldn't make anything so far before. And look what I'm doing now. I'm making games, so or trying to at least. Still still have to finish one, but I am I promise one day I will. Anyway, um. Let me go to the Vibes Makes Games. There you go. Here is his Twitter. And here is his model. Let me put it on big screen so you guys can see it better. I do think that looks pretty cool. That does look pretty cool. Really industrial. I like it. I like it. Names are... You get to name a character, item, or town in the game. That is an option. <laughs> Might have to look at that myself because it is adorable indeed. Uh, so, um, Vibes Makes Games, otherwise known as Ben the Death, it really is awesome. I like it. So, um, yeah. Um, do I really have that option? That's a name character Really? You got you all guys have that um that as a redeem on my channel? Let me go to my chat. I don't see me today. Name generator. Yeah, I guess. I didn't even know that I had that one. <laughs> well, then you can, um, if you really want to, you might be able to name a character in Gaia if you want to. Uh, so far, of course, I only have Gaia and the Baker. So if you want to maybe name the Baker, he doesn't have a name yet, so that would be okay. <laughs> so feel free to... Uh, to redeem that and uh, 
get a character in Gaia the game, in this case, the Baker, or, well, maybe a future one, you can also hold off and wait for it, because uh, obviously more will come. And if you want to actually have an NPC yourself, then of course you would need to pay for that, because, yeah, you know, it takes time to make pixel art, it's not fast. Um, that I will not do for free, but um, you might want to have one, and then actually redeem the 1000 points and name that character. So it actually becomes a non-playing character with a name. That would be kind of cool if you have that. Makes you uh, more special, I would say. Anyway, what do we think of this dragon so far? Is this something that looks nice? Would we say like this we can start to look at animating? Because I will go basically first for um, an idle animation. I think that's that's within the with the within the realm of possibilities for me so far. I might just make it bounce up and down a little bit. That that should be something. Maybe move the wings a little just to uh, to have a an idea of not being so damn static. <laughs> and maybe I should just first export it, or maybe not. I don't even have to export it. I can just uh, save it. That should be already in my game. I think I put it here. Player, Red Dragon. There we go. Put Red Dragon as a sprite here. No, but this to be. There we go. Where the heck are we? <laughs> oh, that's a little too small. <laughs> Let me change that a little bit. Um, I need to set the uh, pixels per unit to 32. Full rect. Okay. Point no filter. That's also correct. Apply. Now let's see what happens if we put it. Oh. Wait. Better. Still a little small, maybe. Well, we can size it up. That's because the scale is also lower than it should be. Well, and of course, I will not use a capsule collider, but more like a small dragon is still cute, though. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Looks cute. I kind of lose the color, though. Why on earth would that be? Because look, there's white here. I kind of wonder if that's something that happens when you use... Um, ah, this must be this. There you go. Wow. That I wouldn't have thought of. <laughs> you can basically uh, make them red and change the main red color, the, the white color to red. That is not something you... I would have thought of, really. Uh, so, let's take off the capsule collider in this case. That's not a, a very easy fix. Yeah, it's a very easy fix. Uh, and instead of a, um, a capsule collider, let's put in... Um, what is the collider that we want to use for that? Collider. Composite collider, no. Polygon collider, that sounds like the one that I want. Polygon collider, pretty. Like I can change that a little bit. This is still a little bit off. It's not like I want it to be. Where did you go? Polygon Collider, where are you? There. Added you a little bit. So let's put this corner there. I don't have to be perfectly. I'd like it to be a little bit better. So we don't get stuck everywhere, you know. The feet are important, more important than anything else. So let's put it here. The only disadvantage, obviously, when you have a more complex, uh, complex shape, you have to really consider the collider a bit more. But I'm not unhappy with what I created. 
this should be okay, at least for now. So, obviously, I need to apply all my overrides. So, there we go. Now, the polygon collider is there. I will put it here. I prefer to have a heat that you cannot just move that without opening the without the thing. Anyway, here we go. So, Arivia now has actually a body. <laughs> and let's see what happens if I play. She should be able to go to the floor. See the floor, but not so weird. <laughs> Zoom in so far, that's never nice. There's a little bit of space here that I don't really like. She should be on the floor. I wonder if that means my polygon collider is too tight here. Probably. But what is that space in between? I always dislike that. I see that more often. Like, you see your collider is nowhere near where they say it is. But for whatever reason, you're floating above the air. <clears throat> Would that just mean I need to put this a little more like there? Yeah. So weird, right? Why would I have to go more like there to make them stand on the ground? Find it a little off, to be honest. Okay, I must exit play mode and have to do it again. So now her polygon is still not good. We know what we have to do. Let's edit that thing. And go a little up. Hydrate. Good idea. Thank you. Always save in time, right? So, obviously, she doesn't have any animations yet, and I'm not sure how much of an animation I will actually be making, but probably whatever I make in animation will look very amateuristic. But already we have the direction correct and everything like that, so that's pretty good. Skill should go down. And now that I mentioned it, let's basically go to the package manager and install quickly the not in project. In the machine, I kind of like having the cinema machine and the follow camera and the different cameras that you can have. Which, if you already seen my game Gaia before, they you know, playing around a little bit with uh, having the camera zoom in and out, depending on if you're running or standing still. And I think that's a really cool effect that you can create. Uh, so, yeah, that is something I would really always like to do. So, in the machine, let's put a virtual camera in here. Following our character. Where the heck? Um, that is a bit weird. Because it is. Let's put it to probably five. I think five is really nice. We already have what we want here. And also, we will want, yeah, we're going to have some backgrounds and stuff like that on this. Um, so let's already create an empty object here for backgrounds, which we will populate probably with a few different ones. Um, component is the composite collider. 
Was it? No, it was not. It was a polygon collider. Also, just like the one that we just had. And with that polygon collider, which you now will see is like nothing, just thing, no more. You can just go and set the corners like there. We go further than there. Let's put it here, maybe a bit high. Be not like we can never reach the top of the screen. We can go higher. Maybe we can even fly later. Who knows? And just for now, I'm going to set it something like that. Not much, but just something like that. And on my virtual camera, there was like an extension, but what was that again? It's the confiner 2D, and I'm going to the bounding shape set to this one. That would keep it inside that boundary, just to see if that works. Nope. Oh, that's cool. I forgot. I always forget this stuff. Where is that? Physics. No. There. It should be on its own layer, and that layer, I should make sure that it doesn't collide with it. So, um, put a layer. Background. Put it on the layer backgrounds. Uh, with that in place, you can go again to the settings and make sure the background does not collide with anything. Just use for the confiner. How are I? How am I today? I am absolutely doing great today. Well. Great is maybe a bit overstated. I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm super tired. I had a terrible night. I didn't sleep much. But I figured, let's just go for it and do it anyway. You know, tired, I can sleep when I'm dead or something. <laughs> okay. This is better. The only thing that I don't like is that my virtual camera can still see parts um, that I do not wish. This is going okay. This works. But I should be confined. Oh, did I not set that? I did, right? Because as far as I know, keeping the cinema machine confiner on it should keep me inside the boundaries that I just set, and I should not be able to cross. So the camera should also not keep following beyond that. Let me see. I didn't check that. What happens if I go further? Will it stop after a while? Because it kind of should. Not at all stopping at all. Weird. Hey, AZ. Uh, I also hope that the, <laughs> that the jam project is going well. At least we changed from uh, having just a capsule to a dragon. So we're, we have made a little bit of progress today. I was trying to get the cinema machine to keep me, me in a, a certain place. So far, that didn't work. So I might have a, just a small second where I check out how I did that, because normally that's the same kind of process for for any of the of the cinema machine additions, you just put a confiner on it, set it to a certain uh, collider so that it knows that it should stay inside that shape. And for whatever reason, it doesn't stay in my, inside my shape. So maybe I forgot something that is probably easy to fix. Because here, for example, we have the cameras, we have the main camera, and the main camera does not have that stuff, or at least it shouldn't. We have a cinema machine brain, though. Um, but the um, idle camera has a bounding shape also, just like the other one did. Um, but what might be different is the framing transposer. That might be different. Let me check that for a bit. Framing transposer. Yeah, I think that's the one. 
and then the aim was not composer but yeah composer noise none yeah and this is the same so oh for th those of you who do not know that this is my game Gaia that I've also been trying to make and if you look here you will see my daughter which is a little hard to see with the gizmos in front but here she is in all her glory uh, my main character my daughter of five years old and the one that I was talking about that you might be able to name if you want to that's my baker right here you can take him out of the bakery if you want to see him a little better uh, that's the guy here he is looks a bit like a Mario or a Luigi if you ask me <laughs> I checked when I last used Blender. It's been a little over three months. Uh-oh, Decidious. You are so behind. You need to really work on that. And I think you've been rating or rating, uh, been looking at, at Fren, right? Fren's been making tons of progress, as far as I could see, in her Blender endeavors. So I'm, I'm sure that looking at her might also give you a bit more inspiration to do um, more blender because yeah you know it's still more blender so let me see if this helped and now i'm confined in that little space that i want to stay uh stay in doesn't really seem like it yet i don't know why i checked recently she's been doing well yeah she's making tons of progress the the scenes that she's making are looking ex incredible uh, and the the woman that she was modeling the other day that was um, pretty awesome looks good um you know what for now i should not focus too much on that um bounding shape that for whatever reason doesn't seem to work i will figure it out later we have our dragon we might want to play around a little bit with this one and um, and start doing some more work on him maybe animate the idle animation and um, i could see him maybe bouncing a bit. maybe the wings flapping a little i don't know it's, it's hard to uh, to imagine and to do because you know uh, as as much as i am um, I try to do this stuff. <laughs> I've never really made much animation, so um, you know, I, I'd love to be good at it, but I'm not sure if I am. <laughs> so I, I think a good idle animation would at least contain can consist of about four frames, more or less. Uh, and yeah, of course, then I can try and make something decent out of that. But in this case, if I want to maybe also flap the wings. That might even be like eight frames because you want to go like and then go up again. Um, I'm just thinking of uh, what the end result could be. Maybe I'm just totally nuts and I will not be able to do any of this. But um, anything that I can do that is better than nothing is is already a win, right? First animation. Let let me go. Um, Let's go for a frame. Uh, it should be probably just basically be. I'll go for now putting seven or eight frames. So we can have a little bit of uh, variation in the wings. And so obviously I want it to end like it started. So then it's a full animation. So let me go for a second. What I could imagine is that there, my entire. Uh, thingy just goes down a little bit go back up again let's go for the wings in a little bit of a different state more down 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 up 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 Uh, it's it's hard <laughs> i'm i'm finding this incredibly tough uh, i might go first for the one where i have the wings more down so i will see if i can go that fifth frame i think the fifth frame would be the most logical one to do that and i want to basically 
erase the entire wing altogether. Let's go for that first. Whoops, don't, don't cut out the tail as well, Max. That's not a good thing. Let's go. Think, what the heck is he doing now? He will not have any wings. How long is the jam? It's until, um, it's it was three weeks and I missed the first week. So it's still two weeks. Well, a little less. Um, so yeah, there's still some space for me to do something, I guess. Mm -hmm. Let me go for it. I don't really want to overthink it, so I'm just going to see if that would look like maybe cute. Probably looks like shit. Well, actually not so terrible. thought it would be worse. I'm not loving it yet, but I, of course, I have to do the in-between frames also. It does look like a bit of a flap. Might even be able to cut some frames. What do you guys think? This one of my first animations ever, you know, so bear with me. <laughs> if I say like this this the fifth animation frame would be like that so in the fourth i want maybe to have the wings like halfway still a little up there let's go maybe put them like that take this away still have some of the wing here i don't know like that maybe and then go over here mm, this one i think i want them want this Intend it as a light or just moving idle animation, an idle animation. I want it to look like a dragon who's just flapping the wings a little bit when they're standing still. So I don't want to overshoot at this. Like basically, I think this is already getting a little better. I don't know about the color if I want to have it light because then if it's light, you don't see it. Oh, by the way, not sure if you I re, if you remember the fish I made, but I made a small four-second animation for it. Of course, I still remember the fish you made. You showed it in the Discord, so I do remember that. If there's anything that I do have, it's a pretty good memory, so... <laughs> So now I'm going to have to go like for a little bit of an in-between, so I'm thinking that... I might later want to add some nerves or something in there, but I'm not sure because that might be a bit too much detailing for um, a 32-bit character. Let's uh, raise this a little bit, but not too much. Like so. Because here now, I think they could still have the wings a little more visible. So. We would go from here, have the wings still full. We go down a little bit, we go back up, and we clap our wings. And we have them forward. And then basically what I would say is that six should be like a direct copy of four. So go back up and then have them out again. Can I do that? Yeah, I must be able to do that, right? Be direct copy. Like 
at screens that was not supposed to be. Delete print. So now it should be more like, yeah. I'm not unhappy with that at all. I posted the animation in your Discord. You can check it when you want to. Yeah, let me have a look right now. Uh, right. We have that in show your art. There we go. I'm going to open the YouTube for that. I trust you fully, so. Wow, that is cute. Wait, wait, wait up, guys. I'm going to have to um, put that right here for you guys so you can see it as well. For those of you who don't know, the city is the city is is, um, is in my um, channel for a long time. And this is a fish he was modeling before. And now we can actually see the animation for that. So look at that. That looks cute as hell. There's a little bit of a, a trail which might be just in my YouTube. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be. Look, it was. Do you see that? Like a grayish trail behind it. Could also be the rendering quality. You never know with that stuff. So, but yeah, I think that looks amazing. Yeah. Really nice work. I'm pretty happy with my dragon now. <laughs> That that is the first kind of animation that I could make. Try to do any post processing, yeah, yeah, it's it's fine, you know, that that is part of uh, of life. What I might do still, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think one wobbly is enough. Like with the legs, no, you don't have to go all the time up and down, up and down, up and down. But I think for the for. For simple animation, which I've never really tried before, I'm pretty proud of this actually. <laughs> it works and it looks pretty okay. So let's um, let's save this. And as far as I remember, and I'm not 100% sure of that. There we go. We have the frame, so we can make the animation right off the bat here um, <clears throat> to be an idle animation for our dragon. And um, that is what that is what I truly, truly like about uh, having it directly from A Sprite. So you can just um, make it right here and um, change it, and it will update it Im immediately. You don't have to do anything yourself. So let me put in an animation controller. Controller that we need to make. Um, so we don't have one yet, obviously, so it's a bit of a shame that you cannot make it from here. Animation, let's put it here. Uh, animation controller, always look for that. Stretch, oh, yeah, okay, a lot of stretching. Jesus, Patrick, you want me to stretch for, for a week or? <laughs> okay, you know, I do not have a lot of space here, so in order for me to truly stretch, I'm probably have to stand so give me a second but first i need to uh, uh leave the uh, uh enemy but i want to name this first so i hope you are, are oh no i'm not going to do jumping jacks because then i'm waking up the entire house i have a wife and two kids my wife i don't know if she sleeps but the kids are sleeping and if i wake them up i don't have a nice day anymore so, but I'm going to stand for you guys. This is a pr uh, first. I've never done this before in the stream to stand and do this stuff. And as you can see, I have to bend them. Otherwise, I bump my head here. I hope the sound is not too bad from here, but I will try to stretch. I look like crap. <laughs> Let's put this leg up here and stretch. Oh, that stretch is really good. Woo. <laughs> Bead in the attic. That is a very good assertion that you have right there. So, I hope that was enough stretching for you, Patrick. 
Yes, I am indeed in the attic, and this is uh, I can touch the roof from here. Like everything here is roof just above me. <laughs> I can see the slant of your roof. If that's the roof, that is the roof. <laughs> For sure, is the attic. This is my attic. The that little dark thing you see right there. That's my roof window. So that's when I work here. The only window that I have. At the moment, it doesn't help anyway. It's dark as hell, so you don't see anything. Um, so let's put the here. An animator with the controller on another. Let's put um, an animation window. Where are you? Animation, animation. Create an animation clip. Let's put it in. Projects, art, nope, animations. Uh, let's call this Array uh, Idle Anim. Kind of hard to tell because it could be perspective. Well, no, yeah, I can imagine, yes, and especially when it's darker, but this is my ethic. Yeah, things are coming along, and I wasn't expecting to be honest, that I uh, would be able to do my own animations. Um, I'm still very much, um, how do you say, a little unaware of what I can actually do or not do. Um, and like I usually say a lot, I feel like I'm not an artist yet. Uh, and people tend to disagree nowadays. I sh and they, they tell me to shut up. <laughs> So, um, I guess when I start to tell you that you should shut up, then I guess you're doing better than, than you thought you are. So, maybe, maybe you should just indeed uh, take it if they say that that is not true. You're definitely an artist. And, okay, I'm an artist. This is looking pretty awesome. I'm pretty happy with this. I might have to share that later. And uh, I want to see it active. Uh, idle animation should always be, right? So that should be something that we see. Yeah, there you go. Look at her go. <laughs> Look at her go. I'm not sure if she will ever be able to fly. I mean, I'm not sure if I will be able to do that in a game jam game. <laughs> Better than my pixel art, which is used in these emotes. Uh, a bit small, so let me check it when going over it. Oh, they're pretty cool, though. Uh, that animation, the first one, uh, that is the one that it would say is just you rotating your, your pixel art, right? <laughs> I don't see it changing that much. Uh, but, you know, for my main character of Gaia, oof, my... Um, my biggest concern at the moment, I have an idle animation and I also have a, um, a running animation. But since she's wearing a dress, she's going to have to, you're going to see the dress moving. And that for me is something that I'm still not 100% sure of how I'm going to pull that off. And, and it's just one of the animations because you can imagine Greek mythology will have gods and those gods usually wear loincloth or stuff like that and loincloth is kind of like you're doing dresses i'm like yes people are made of bacon you know bacon is good we all love bacon don't we if you're not liking bacon i don't know i don't know if we can be friends anymore <laughs> but if people are made of bacon i might get too tempted to eat people uh, might not be a great idea I have to think about that. <laughs> Eating people is frowned upon as far as I know. Anyway, um, so what I still do not know, people seem to, bacon is indeed fantastic. It is indeed fantastic. And I, I seem sometimes that people are trying to make vegetarian versions of bacon. First of all, why the heck do we still call it bacon if it's not made of pork? Bacon is supposed to be made of pork. If it's not made of pork, it's not bacon. Um, and yes, you can simulate the taste. I'm sure you can get close to it, but it's not pork, so it's not bacon. It's 
vegetarian version of it. But I have that. There, there's something here in the Netherlands. We call it the vegetarian butcher. I'm like, huh? You're not butchering anything. You're not a butcher. Also, how can a vegetarian butcher be be, be something that exists for me in my mind? That's impossible. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> maybe I'm just being uh, overly, um, I don't know, um, concerned about that. <laughs> well, now that she has an idle animation, we at least have the first animation going. And what I'm going to have to figure out, because that is something that I don't know yet. They kill the vegetable, but that's not butchering. That's cutting a plant, you know. You do like, whoosh, plant gone. <laughs> Things are called like meat, but it's plant-based. The only reason I refuse to eat it is because they title, title it like meat. Well, I don't refuse to eat it, and I'm even open to try vegetarian. Um, I don't think I will ever become a vegetarian, but I'm not eating nearly as much meat anymore as I used to. I used to be like a carnivore. If there ever was a better version of a carnivore than me, I don't know who it was. Because I go to a restaurant, mixed grill all the way, like all meat. <laughs> I don't like fish too much, so for me it would be like either I eat plants or I eat meat. <laughs> so yeah, then meat wins. Sorry. Sorry for your vegetarians. I love you guys also. You're very awesome people as well. But... It's hard for me to become vegetarian because I like meat so much. <laughs> in many places, meat is a luxury. Yeah, that's true. So if I would live in those places, I'd probably have to move. All you can eat is vegetables. I don't dislike vegetables. And you can get a long way when you go with mushrooms and stuff like that, which are basically pretty close at replacing meat will not be a dream for me otherwise maybe if i would be born in that place and i would never have known that there's something like meat i might be okay but i did know that there was something like meat and i will miss that <laughs> i grew up eating a lot of vegetables but i was also very thin and underweight at my old job well a bit at my old job, I had to visit a customer. I happened to visit on the day that was their vegetarian day, and I was okay with the food when I saw it until the chef said, they're green peas meatballs. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly the same beef I have with some <laughs> beef. <laughs> with a vegetarian butcher like there, there's no such thing mister you cannot be a vegetarian butcher that doesn't exist you're not a butcher you're making a replacement for something that is meat and because you want it to look like it's meat you call yourself a butcher but you're not i would have called them moldy bowls all the at that coloring yeah well the the thing is they put coloring in it to make it look like the same product and i, I that, that for me sometimes is also beyond me. If you're so against meat, why do you want your replacement to look like the meat that you don't like? That's, that that is, doesn't compute in my brain. If he hadn't used the word meat to describe it, I would not have been disappointed while eating it. Yeah, yeah, because you're the word meat makes you think you're going to get a, a nice piece of meat. And it might even be pretty awesome, might be very well tasting, but they're trying to trick you into thinking that it's still meat, which it's not. So, also not sure what to say about that beyond that. But um, yeah, for for me, that is also uh, would be um, a no go. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I I like my uh, my little animation here, and I'm gonna have to post that on Twitter maybe later as my main character for my uh, my jam game pretty 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 happy with that uh, especially when you look at it from afar you still can see that it's a dragon but it, it doesn't have to um, it doesn't have to uh, have too much detail I liked our food talk yeah me too well we can talk about anything on this channel this is a very 
free and open channel like 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 i said before everyone is welcome we can talk about anything you can talk about religion if you want to doesn't mean that i agree with you but you can talk about it that is fine um i've had a nice discussion with one of my colleagues today actually about religion as well and for me it's fun um, i'm an atheist so i will be very clear i do not have a religion that i uh, am going for for me religion is nice but i don't really care um how you how anyone sees a religion you have to do that yourself for me the most important thing about religion it would be in your heart you you live it in your heart if you don't feel it there you you're not doing your religion correct if you ask me so if you need a church for that i don't know you might want to have a, a little bit of a, a different look at it i'm annoyed that our caterer still hasn't updated the lunch plan for this week so i have no clue what i'm getting tomorrow Oh my God, I can imagine that. You know, I had once we were at a client and they changed the way all the catering stuff was uh, placed. So instead of having the cheese and the hams and everything on the left side, it was suddenly on the right side. Oh my God. Don't do that to a lot of tech people. My OCD went into overdrive. I was like, where the hell is the cheese and the ham? It's not here. Yes, it is. It's right there. No, it's not. It should be here. I always had it here. And now it's suddenly there. Now I'm confused. What the heck is on the other side now? <laughs> good people can be good people without religion, but bad people cannot be good people without. Yeah. I mean, I think you meant to say that... Um, bad people cannot become good people with religion I don't, I don't think if you're bad in essence i don't think your religion is going to change it um, if you're a good person i don't think it matters what religion you have or if you have any at all you're just a good person so you should stay a good person no matter what i miss my job at the oil refinery they oh wait they need that extra guidance because they act like children a lot of people act like children <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that keep nurturing your inner child your inner child is great uh, i miss my job at the oil refinery they could afford the good lunches i also put on about 25 kilos over a six month period so your skill doesn't miss the oil refinery you do i can imagine because probably the food was awesome you you ate yourself completely happy uh, but yeah that's the problem with food right um if if i go um to the country of my wife my wife is peruvian if we go there basically i can already in advance say that i should probably go on a diet before i go to peru because if i go there we go to the family we go to the friends we go to another family we go to more friends all in one day and it's impolite to say no you can imagine what happens because peruvian food is considered one of the best cuisines in the world so then you go eat somewhere and you feel like i shouldn't eat too much because i'm going to probably go still to other friends or family and we're going to have food again nice so you eat it anyway then you go to the next visit and yes again you get food and they're going to be really dissatisfied if you don't eat it so oh my god the first few times I went to Peru, I was not able to balance that correctly. So I would basically be going one place, then, then eating myself full, going to the next one, thinking like, oh my God, I cannot eat anything anymore. And they put another plate full of food for you. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I, I can tell you, you have to really consider that if you go to any country in South America. Um, you need to be aware that it's, it's the same in Colombia, Venezuela, stuff like that. Those kind of countries, if you are into the families or into the friends, they will feed you. And it's not nice to say no. So be aware what you eat. Don't eat too much. Try to take small bites. And, and also, one thing that I didn't, I wasn't aware of before, if you finish the plate, they think you need more. So it's better to leave a little bit on the plate and then you think you just had enough, you were happy, and you don't need more. So finishing your plate, the dumbest thing you can do if you don't want to get too full. 
pay was good, job was really fun, and the lunch they could afford was amazing. <laughs> Interesting, never knew that it was part of their culture. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you you learn really fast, to be honest. And Quantulo says, lol, <laughs> they would see me and try to feed me more anyways. You're thin, I guess, then? Because I cannot say that I'm thin. I mean, I'm, I'm not too much overweight, but I'm definitely not thin. <laughs> so they know I can eat, but they also know they can put more in me. I guess maybe that's the reason they, they keep feeding me. But the most fun was really... Um, once it was clear that I was to stay, always been thin. Uh, I am rarely not underweight, very fast metabolism. Oh, that sucks. Um, I mean, some people would wish for your metabolism, I'm sure. Um, sometimes even me. Uh, although my metabolism is pretty good, if I eat, then usually within two hours or something, I need to go to the toilet and it will come out slowly. So I think it's pretty fast with me also. So, in essence, my, my metabolism should be okay. But for whatever reason, I cannot really lose the weight. And instead of what you have uh, being thin and rarely being underweight, I don't think I remember the last time I was in the correct weight. I, I don't know what that is. Then, then again, I'm a Burgundic guy. And if you don't know what that means, basically Burgundic means I enjoy life. And enjoying life means enjoying going out, enjoying food, enjoying drinks. I don't drink too much, but when I drink, I enjoy it. I'm a sucker for special beers. Um, if any one of you guys knows the program Untapped, I, I, I am un untapped for a while. And uh, I think I've had like 600 different special beers. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about just a regular Heineken or or stuff like that. No, really special beers that are from all over the world. And uh, sometimes super heavy, sometimes very light. I love it. You can, you can always give me one of those and I will gladly drink it. And if I don't know it, I will try it. And I, I like that because I, I like trying new ones. Because if I have all the time the same thing, yeah, I get a little bit uh, bored. <laughs> they call those micro brews here. Macro is more like what people know. Yeah. Exactly. So, like the the more unknown breweries, and and there's some cool ones. Um, we have beer festivals over here, and once I went to one, and they had a beer, it was pretty limited. I don't think they they sell it anymore. And it was called Ice Ice Baby, and of course I know the song by Vanilla Ice, so that was pretty fun. Uh, but that beer was a 21% barley wine beer. And they even interview me for that because I was having it together with a friend of mine. We were like, ah, that sounds nice. That sounds like the, the, the spectacle of the festival. We want to try that one. So we had that beer and then the newspaper came towards us with a, with a camera and, <laughs> and everything to, uh, to basically interview us like that. We were daring to, to take such a, uh, such a, um, <laughs> such a heavy beer. Beer festivals in the Netherlands, blended conferences in the Netherlands. I'm almost sold in moving there. Yeah, you, you should, man. And if you move here, you better make sure that you come visit me uh, or go somewhere to have a drink with me. I mean, most Dutchies that I know are pretty uh, open and friendly. But then again, there's always those exceptions. And the Dutch are known for not being so open. But I guess it's what you, what's surrounding you, moving yourself around. Because... I personally know only the people who are open, friendly, and want to, um, yeah, want to meet people and go out with people. I went to wine festival with intention of getting drunk on wine, no hidden motives. <laughs> but the idea is you spit it out and drink as much as possible. I'd be open for that. I, uh, yeah, I always considered going to the Blender conference last year. I know for sure that um, that friend would love it if you come, and then uh, she can meet you there as well. Because she is going, or went. She went this year. I don't know if is that every year in the Netherlands. I, by the way, I don't even know that because blender is still not my cup of tea. I, I one day probably will try it. For now, pretty happy with what I um, <laughs> what I do with Unity, and maybe if there's an Ace Sprite festival, I, I might go. You know. <laughs>
Anyway, uh, we're, I have not done much, right? But we have been talking nice. I think it's in October in the Netherlands. It's going to be in, again in, um, in October. Let me see. Blender conference. Three, no, I want to know 2024. LA, North American Blender. Let's see if there's also one in the Netherlands. No, it was last year, it was in the, in the Netherlands. The next one is in uh, in LA. So, yeah, it was last year. Yeah. I know because. Um, because friend went and we love friend in this channel so when she tells us something we we listen <laughs> um okay so we have our idol animation what do you think guys should we try to make based on that also um a walking animation we'll be keeping an eye out for it i absolutely want to go sometime yeah, I mean, last year was for me the first time I went to Unite, and that really was amazing for me. Not so much the um, all the different sessions they had, because they, of course, have sessions. That, that's something that they do with those festivals. But for me, the most interesting part is all the people that I met during that time. And I met quite a few. Also, cheers for the ad Twitch. Ah. <laughs> We have some ads. I'm sorry about that, guys. Yeah. I mean, none of you guys are subscribing, so nobody gets rid of the ads. And you don't get those beautiful sub-batches that I created myself, you know. I did work on that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, now you're going to have to suffer ads sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I really don't like that you have to go through ads. But uh, on the other hand, the channel needs to get somehow some money. And, um, well, as you know, we did some sponsored stream a while ago that actually went pretty okay. We have, uh, uh, $250 coming up in March as uh, everything is okay. But, um, yeah, tempting, right? The city is, well, if I don't think a lot of people here have Amazon prime anymore, cause nobody is subscribing using that and that's for free. So it doesn't cost anyone anything. Just give money to the channel, you know, that. I think that's win-win, but yeah. <laughs> it's those kind of stuff that you don't want to be talking about when you do your stream. Like, you should subscribe. And then you look at other people, like, they have, like, 100 subscribers or waiting for their 254th uh, subscriber. And I'm like, what the heck are they doing better than me? Well, probably looking better or uh, having better interesting content, I guess. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, yeah, see, there, there's there's one of those things that uh, advertises me a little bit. Kofi, Kofi, and on Kofi, um, that's what I was talking about earlier. You can also find the link if you want to become an NPC in Gaia. It is a possibility. I'm not saying it's for everyone. I'm not saying it's for free. It definitely isn't. But it might be a fun way if you like what I'm going and what I'm doing with my game, and you would like to have yourself probably in the Amsterdam level walking around or being on, on a, I don't know, on a terrace or walking, being in the distance, or you see yourself as a character in the game, you can be. It just costs a little bit of money because I need to create the character for that. I don't think that's unfair. So, um, yeah. I'm going to have to put some stuff in here to make for a more interesting environment, right? What do you think? I did have a scrolling background thing already once, so I have Yes, city, yes, you did. <laughs> Thank you so much, the city. Thank you so much, my first subscriber towards the 10 goal. Yay, I'm, I'm going to be absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Well, Patreon is another way to do it, I guess, Quantulu, but for me, Patreon has 
for whatever uh, for whatever reason it feels a bit like it's connected to triple x kind of stuff there's tiers and put that where you'll find it will cover the cost yeah there's also tiers in in um, in Kofi you can you can become a subscriber and even get a a special title in um or a special um a group that you belong to in in the discord server if you uh subscribe to that on uh, experience with patreon but may make more money through it sometimes would argue too much too much money well too much money there's a lot uh, there's there's a lot of money that's going to be needed to make my main game uh gaia accessible um uh, for everyone so th there's a lot of money involved in that and if i want to make what i have in my brain and i have a lot in my brain <laughs> that that will be a lot of pixel art it will be a lot of voice acting and that stuff if you want to do it properly it just doesn't come for free it just won't and yes i can do some ai stuff to make demos and stuff like that but beyond that you're gonna need money it's it's really you're, you're gonna want to put money into good actors and i know a little bit about acting because i used to um i used to act myself and i used to direct and write movies i still do that every now and then but long ago uh, i made some uh third prize winning movie which was actually a very um if i do say so myself original way of looking at musical Nobody was actually singing, and still it was a musical. And everybody considered that we made the best music, the best sound design. Um, we got tons of prizes. Uh, we were nominated for best writing, best directing, best a lot of stuff, best movie. We were third, and, and then we were like, wow, that was amazing. And you make in 48 hours a musical in a different kind of way. So that was absolutely cool. But that also shows you the importance of good acting. and voice acting is no different it makes so much difference if somebody knows how to put an intonation in words to make it sound that more um original I was gonna uh, going to say my mother's boyfriend is dutch so i know a bit about it and sort of dated a dutch gal online and was learning for a while can't say i got very far B bf is best friend not boyfriend yeah <laughs> Okay, my mother's best friend. Uh, okay. If you make a sketchy game, you'd be surprised or not how fast people throw money at you. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can <laughs> make nice games and not so much. I'd still like to support the project sometime. I've considered ordering a guitar and a mixer so I can record some music. I mean... The city is you you're always supporting the the channel just by being there as well i mean everyone here who comes back regularly for me that's so much support because you know you, you don't want to know how many times the thought comes into my head like can i actually do this am i not just being crazy can i can, can i do this will i be able to finish this ever um and your cause is very good and it's encouraging to see it thank you thank you i, I really appreciate that uh, and I, I also agree um not just because of the fact that i'm gonna make it accessible um but i also i have a very maybe big plan for it i'm very depressed when i see the mentality of developers trying to make quick money yeah yeah, this is not the field for them. No, definitely not. I, I'm not trying to make quick money. I'm trying to just earn enough money to make what I have in my brain. Uh, and I know that pixel art, for example, is very specialistic. I'm okay in making it, but I'm definitely, and I mean definitely not the fastest. And if I want to make 12 worlds with different gods, if I want to make an, a, an, a believable Amsterdam level, and stuff like stuff like that and still also make it accessible which should be for me then basically most of my focus because i have to do the controls i have to make sure that that it works and i can program it it's unlikely they understand what sustainable income means because they're fresh out of school and expecting top dollar you know what sometimes i wish i started this when i was 
young as well. Now I'm an old fart, as I would say. Uh, I have two kids, I have a wife. Free time is just limited. It's just much more limited. It's not like you can just throw hours at stuff like this and be like building your game for eight hours a day without any consequence in the world. I cannot do that anymore. I wish I could. I had my moments where I would just basically come home even after work and I would just quickly eat and I would be behind my computer. But at that time I was playing games instead of making them. And I would be doing that from, I don't know, 5.30 to 1.30 straight. You know, that's like six hours at least that you're working on making something. In that case, I was just playing something. What if I would have been able to make something by then? crypto nft stuff and start making its way into newer games at somewhat alarming pace yeah i see stuff like that as well like they make characters that you can buy so that they become your own or something uh, but i don't i don't know I, they, those games don't do good as far as i can see but yeah maybe sometimes they do and you, you get a hit you're lucky but uh, when I got into game design around my late teens, you think that's a good time. Then I find out you start 12, 13. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just starts earlier and earlier. I just put my hand on my head and think, well, do what I can best. I can know I'm, uh, I think, well, would it, uh, but I know I'm five plus years behind. Hey, I'm 47. I'm much more than that behind. <laughs> I wanted to get into game development at age 13, was told no by my parents, tried learning Blender when I was 16, found an area that I didn't like, and stopped, now I'm 30, trying to get into it. You're never too late. You're never too late. It, it doesn't matter if you're older or not. You also have more experience in life, you have more experience doing things, and uh, yeah, that basically also means something, right? Yeah. Well, the tech changes drastically every five or so years. So you have to relearn a lot. Yeah. And basically when you're older, you also are usually a little bit more used to learning. I mean, I love learning. Learning is easy for people who do that more often, you know. And uh, what do I want to do? I wanted to do something with the code because yesterday we were looking at um, making that tree something that can change, right? So we don't know yet what this is, right? At this moment, this is just a green blob. And when we touch it, or we find an object that will explain what this is, then we should be able to turn that into something that we can burn down or that it becomes a tree that we can actually see, right? We have to relearn a lot. I learned a decade of stuff I can hardly use. Yeah, agreed. But if we're talking about things like game design and game development and, and how to make art, I mean, that doesn't go away. How to make art stays the same. Um, well, maybe you go, uh, um, if you look at the super high tech, uh, high end games that have super realistic graphics, yes, that might have changed a little bit. But you still see so much retro games like this making pixel art or 2D uh, sprites that there are, that's the same. Uh, it all comes full circle because reality is in society and in reality, out of new ideas and starts mining old ones. Yeah, so that is also definitely the case. And you still see, like, I even saw the other day that there's, I don't know if you guys ever played this game, but if, if you do, please let me know in chat. Because this game for me was such a funny platforming puzzle game that, that, that I, and I, I know there's a many of those, but one of them that really jumped out for me, and you might not know it, so bear with me, Simon the Sorcerer. And I saw recently that they're remaking that game at the moment. That That, that is for me, like, that was, for me, <laughs> that's nostalgia at, at, at best. Like, that game was awesome so so funny that simon had the craziest things that he would say 
in the game and, and now they're remaking it and i saw the graphics and i was like eh, it doesn't look very nice I, it doesn't look like simon so for me i'm i'm, I'm too much of an old fart i cannot look through it maybe uh, and and i just it kind of hurts me that they make him look so much different you know i learned this recently but apparently i can swap between art stuff and coding somewhat easily i'm not sure if i want to do art things strictly or strictly coding but i'm still in the early stages of, and so anything can happen yeah like people are finally in general noticing games from about a decade ago look better than games now yeah that that's that is obviously something that you can uh have a conversation about i mean art is subjective if you like it or not some people like things that you would think are awful and then again, I can also enjoy very much those games that look hyper real realistic. That is so realistic that it it really is like you're walking there, and I can enjoy that for sure. And I know that part of it might be the future, but then there's also that feeling that you get when you play a nostalgic little game of Tetris or Pac Man or I don't know one of those games that you used to play hours 1941 that bomb uh, thrower stuff like that <laughs> but in this context we can start focusing more on gameplay gameplay stop talking so much about uncanny valley stuff <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry but it's so nice to talk about that um, i i kind of like nostalgia i kind of like talking about it yeah it, it means that probably i'm i'm not progressing as much as i should but I'm having fun. <laughs> it makes so much fun to talk about stuff like that. Okay, so let's put see here cameras. I'm put them together because I'm feeling pretty much that there are going to be more cameras than that. Let's reset that thing. I never like it when they go everywhere. I put the virtual camera here as well. Here we go. A little bit more organized. Uh, let's also put an empty or one for managers. There we go. I put the audio manager in here. Manager should be reset. There we go. A game with less good graphics can still be fun. A game with good graphics does not necessarily mean it's fun, but sometimes it works out if the budget is big enough. The budget, uh, the promotion. Um, there, there's so many things that, um, that actually, in the end, will make a game be better or not. Well, better no better received um for to, for it to be received it has to be known so marketing should be super top notch uh, if you want to uh, have a big budget title do well it has to look great you will have to probably invest in putting tv commercials internet commercials everywhere you, you need to see it everywhere so that basically it gets something there in your brain thinking i have to have this that that's what what it has to do um and with more retro titles you can be much more lucky also because people are sometimes looking for something retro you know they want to go get that old feeling again uh, even if they're young some young people like that that style because they don't see that so much anymore so they want to have something like that anyway there we go uh, so tree, and we should say that this tree is still not known, and we can, uh, what we can do in the sprite render is later we can swap that out for another sprite. At least that's what I'm thinking. So we can actually make, let's, let's make a very simplistic tree for now. Um, if I can, because yeah, you know, still is not my best part. Um... What do we say? Would we go for a 64 by 64 tree of his, or is 33 by 32 by 32 enough? I think the tree should be about the same size as a dragon, maybe. Can be a bit bigger, but 32, 32 has some space still. Let's, um, let's go quick with uh, some green. And my brush size should be a bit bigger. Let's go like five or something. Yeah. Uh, B. Why doesn't it work? Because it didn't 
do it. I just do eraser. I didn't want to eraser. I want to do this. So let's go like this, make it a tree. Make this smaller, like two. Oh, not 52. Ooh. Uh, no, it's not nice. It will not look great, but especially because the color difference is too big. And you know, I'm I'm not putting too much effort into this into this right now. I'm just gonna make something quickly. I don't wanna necessarily be a perfect tree, just to have something that it can turn into. Tasty tree. Put some apple squares in, in there. Yeah, I can do that. That would be okay. Two, let's go like this, and then create bark here, like there you go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, let's go for one and put a lighter color than that in there. Maybe this to have some highlighting. You always have a light source, right? Definitely not perfect at all. <laughs> and, it's too big, right? It's pretty better in this case. Don't believe in light, it hurts my eyes. <laughs> yeah, something like that. A lot of people have that. <laughs> we'll stick with probing with my hands and echo look. Echo location. <laughs> right. Okie dokie. Save this as um, not player. So we have to go up in art to go to what's the environment. Yeah, let's put a simple tree in here. Definitely not a great tree. Looks horrible, I know. Uh, we call that a happy tree. <laughs> he would, he would for sure. Uh, but Bob Ross calls a lot of things happy trees. So <laughs> I guess it's a happy tree for sure, but um, it's a terrible one. Um, I just want to make something fast so that I'm not really too worried about how it will look. Um, so I have one now and I should make sure that it's again a 32 by 32 and a full rect. And it should be all that I need to change. And let's see, I will not do much except for try and see what happens if I replace this one. Always forget to have to go for that one. And that uh, has the color also on it again. So we have to go again to white so I can actually see what it looks like. Not too bad. <laughs> it's not too bad, really. You focus more on perfection and art is not about that. You lose the passion. In it. Well, you know what? It's it's a little bit, uh, it's a double, uh, double thing for me because one part of me wants to make art that I like. I am perfectionist and I like to make things the way I would love it to look. And I know I could do it, but it needs so much time. And especially now that I'm making a game jam game, you know, there's just simply not that much time to do that. So um, indeed art is not that much about making perfection. Art is about making fun and having fun. And I guess that is what we're trying to do here. So what we're going to do here, we, we're going to take away that um, that tree for now. And what I'm going to try and do, not digital, so I couldn't. So I spent eight plus hours on art, but I had to admit there were times I made it worse. Yeah, not digital, so I couldn't go back. <laughs> yeah, with drawings. Um, I could, you know what? I don't know if 
many of you know this, so I'm going to show you something from my Facebook. And that, that is not something I show here most of the times, but let me go and find it. Because what I will show you is how I used to draw when I was a kid. But I have to find them. There you go. That's the album. Where are they? Would be nice if you actually see them. Oh, there. Okay, in the bottom. So, here we go. This is what I used to draw like. So, I only drew with just pencil. Only black and white. Never used color. Uh, well, I did once in a in, in a in a painting that I made with oil paint, but uh, I wasn't too much into the painting part. Uh, but people were saying that they could feel my drawings. I mean, putting the intention in the hair and stuff like that. The most difficult part about this drawing, by the way, the hands. That was awful. It's so hard to do that and make it look realistic and something that actually could pass through as fingers. Hands are so, so rough. But I also used to make simple things like this, a castle. And kid as I was, I would write down, that's a, kiss, a castle that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> I, just, I just basically drew something out of my imagination and say, this is a castle. It doesn't exist, but... This would be a castle. Yeah, a lot of artists go around making hands and feet. Um, some don't, but they are tough. These are two little puppies fighting over a, a shoe of somebody. I also used to like that. There was two puppies that we used to have, so that's something that I'm pretty proud of also. Uh, I used to draw that just for having fun, you know. Yeah. That was a girl I was uh, crazy in love with. <laughs> and as you can see here in the bottom, if you look closely, um, 1994 is when I drew this. 1994. The one thing that I'm super happy about with this one, and I'm not happy about the mouth, for example, because that is too, I don't know, rough. Not, It's not like it should be. What I'm very proud of is the neck and the shadow part here. This looks perfect to me. Uh, how it felt switching to digital. Um, I must say digital art I didn't make too much. Uh, I just went into pixel art now. Um, and um, never really tried my hand again at making such a drawing than digital. And especially not with this little chunky thing they call a mouse. Because I don't have a tablet to, to draw on. Um, that's what I want to have. It's also why I have a Kofi page to maybe sometime we'll get some some money for buying stuff like that. Yeah, I guess you still will prefer traditional. But for me, making pixel art would go probably a lot more fast if I can do that with just uh, a pen. So, because I know in my brain what I want to draw, and, and if I use it with a mouse, I just don't go so fast. Uh, I'm also pretty happy with my tiger, which looks pretty cool. That's the last one I have here. I used to also have one, I think, of a guy, like a beach bum. But, yeah, it's uh, it's all different. And nowadays, I don't do this as much anymore. I should go back sometimes to drawing a bit. Maybe one day I get a little bit of a setup so I can actually be drawing here on the desk and you guys could see. Uh, again, thank you, the, the Sidious, for uh, for doing the subscription. And thank you for being here all day, uh, well, all day, all, all evening. And uh, have a sweet dream. I hope to see you again in the next stream. I don't know if that's going to be tomorrow. That might be tomorrow. I have no clue. Um, I'm just living at the moment. If I have a chance, I might do it again. If not, then I might just skip it. Um, yeah, that that might be a very good option. So uh, you make, for for example, a scan of a of a of a hand drawn thing, and then go over that digitally. Yeah.
Hey, AV, you're still there. I didn't hear you too much today. <laughs> At least for background, this can save you so much time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I'm going to have to uh, put my hands on creating nice backgrounds also. Um, at least for Gaia, for this game, I probably will go a little, a little easier, just create simple shapes and maybe mountains or stuff like that, or a cave, or I don't know, um, something to, to quickly draw, uh, and maybe even go for a, a tile set that I bought or have downloaded for free to see that I can at least make something that, that works, uh, and from there I can continue. Uh, what I wanted to do now, because I don't want to go too long anymore, um, is basically put something that will trigger this and change this and that is what i want to try if you do not know it try gimp yeah yeah gimp i know but i usually use photoshop i still have one version of photoshop that i uh, sometimes turn to <laughs> despite the funny name it's free and works pretty well yeah yeah gimp uh, gimp is basically like the photoshop uh, but the free version at least it's not a limp, though. <laughs> I think gimp is a better name than limp. <laughs> Nobody wants the limp, but you might want a gimp. <laughs> open source. Yeah, open source can have its benefits, but also its uh, downsides. I would say at least. Anyway, um, I'm going to go now to my object controller, because I wanted to change a little bit about that. prepared it a little bit for what I'm planning to do with this once I change it to this on trigger enter 2D. To be able to do this, um, I don't care, not now, not at all. Um, what I'm going to want to do is obviously uh, create a connection to my uh, sprite render. I'm going to be able to change the sprite. But when working with someone in Finland, our budget was zero. Everything we used was free and open source. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I love open source because that basically uh, makes it also possible to change stuff. So, and I have to get used to a little bit how. Rider uses its uh, code completion. It's possible, but it often means extra work. Extra work and archaic UI. Blender is a great example of this. Blender is still archaic. Yes, it is. Uh, I've been looking at Blender a few times, and I, I just cannot make heads or tails out of it. <laughs> it's, but yeah, I, also, like I say, I, I still don't feel too much like um, like it like an actual um, artist, and especially for Blender, this much this is true even more than um, than for A Sprite. A Sprite comes kind of natural, um, but it's still not uh, like amplified. It's what you use if you cannot afford hundreds or even thousands of dollars on 3D suites. Yeah, that's like if you want to do 3D, you either have things like Maya or you have Blender. And yeah, Maya is probably the better program, but then again, the license is insane. <laughs> if you want to go use that, then uh, yeah. <laughs> So let's see. Um, identified. So if it hasn't been identified yet, then we can uh, still say that it's an unknown clip. Otherwise, if uh, and has been identified, Epic even did promote this idea for a while. Probably using Unreal just to do renders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, nowadays, especially with those um, 
the meta human things that you can do in Unreal. Unreal is very powerful, but really it is very powerful for people who use a lot of 3D. If you don't, then yeah, there's there's always there's always sense in 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 using uh, 3D in 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 Unreal, but I would say I don't see it. Um, but then again, everybody has those kind of things. Um, so let me put a new 2D object here. Let's put again, maybe I should put a, what should I do? A triangle. I want to make a triangle. Why on that? Why not? This triangle is going to be here. Put the minus three point five. Four point three five. Then it's too low. 4.4 when I was too high, 4.45, then it's good. Okay. And let's make the color, I don't know, for now, pink. Why not? Just to prototype this anyway. And this triangle is going to be um, the name. A question mark, but I don't have a question mark. I have to make make one. I don't want to do that yet, so I might do that later. And it also needs um, polygon collider two D. But I still don't think you have a triangle collider two D. Do you? No. Yeah, that would that would be cool. Um, and the polygon collider two D is going to be a trigger the collider itself actually pretty perfect so let's keep it like this and i'm going to add a script to this and i'm going to call that hmm, explanation good enough explanation new script it will go completely in the correct wrong place that is what I sometimes think is not nice about those kind of things. I just move it somewhere I don't want it. Anyway, let's make this very simple again. I'm not going to do too much on uh, trigger enter 2D. Where's the enter 2D? There. Trigger enter 2D, what's the difference? Don't see the <laughs> maybe I'm just done anyway um so here we would go again if other dots uh, compare tag layer that's what we want to know um in this case we don't need more than that um well we do I do at least private should go again I don't like that but we can have uh, a boolean uh, it's going to be called has been activated damn private so stubborn sometimes uh, if other and not has been activated and what we want to do is basically uh, tell the object controller or the object controller, right? Has been uh, okay, I don't want to do that. I just want to do it. be able to reach it. Five. Be able to do that. Uh, access non stable sterilized field has been okay. That. 
Mm. So let's make a uh, uh, object controller. Controller. Damn private. Go away. Here. In a week. We go with uh, object controller is front object of type and um, object controller. What we can do now is that basically object controller has been identified as true. There we go. <laughs> but I also want to do some other things on this because. Basically, um, to make sure that we can have something interesting. I want this item to also change color. Should still become a triangle, but maybe I want to gray it out or something. I want it to stay there, so you know that you've used it. Basically, just just as mechanics, right? I'm I'm not looking into how it actually will stay, but for now, that is maybe my best bet. I go for sprite render again. Sprite render. There you go. Stick the way to DM private. Sprite render. Sprite render. Still here. Seems like everything went quiet now. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's getting later. Uh, so I want to go for uh, sprite render dot color color is I don't remember color dot black or something. Let's change it to black for now to make sure that it's. Clearly different. I like that you also see that it's black right here. Not that I wouldn't know, but <laughs> black is black. <laughs> so then it becomes basically unusable. So I also might want to, uh, well, is has been activated. So we need to make sure that we said has been activated. It's true. Otherwise, we will be able to keep activating that, and I do not wish to do that. So, with that, I should be able to change stuff here, and then we have the things that we want in here, but I'm not done yet. So, let's go back to my object controller. We have our sprite render, right? And our sprite render needs a few things that we do. Basically, we need to do something already at the moment it has been identified. So, I will also want to have a function here that is not one of the standard functions. So, let me do a public um, object has been identified. And much out of this, and in that I would say that right rent right render dot uh, sprite, and then we have to change the sprite. For that to work, we need to actually set the sprite, and that means that make a serialized field. Field rights, uh, right. So we're going to set that in the editor to make sure that we can change this. So we can change this to three sprite. 
there we go. And for that, also, we wanted to change the sprite renderer's color. Color white, there you go. And that should set it to the correct color. And with that, we should be able to change it to the tree that we actually set. Um, that will mean that we have to put the sprite a little down, but that is for later concern. I just want to first see that we're actually identifying it and that when we identify it, we also, that also means by the way that I do not have to make this public. I can still keep this, this has been identified. make sure that I don't have to do that from the other functions I can basically call this function instead and say here that has been identified is true uh, now if I go to explanation it will not know this so I will call this uh, object controller dot object have been identified. That's all you need to do. And now it should know if I did all my coding correct at once. It should know after I go to the triangle that that is a tree, change it to a tree, and the sound should become the sound of the tree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if the code is not readable on its own, I will definitely annotate it. But for now, I can read it pretty fine. So, hmm. oh wait, I already changed that to a trigger the other day. Yeah, to be a trigger just yet. Uh, but that also means I need to change that in my code, right? I need to do that with the function. Explanation, no, object control. Object has been identified, so I would say that um, the box collider, huh. because now we're also not using that box collider anymore, but I want to do that. So I have identified this, so I do my sprite render stuff, I do my box collider, so it's trigger, it's trigger. Nothing worse than surfing through un 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 annotated code. Well, e yes and no. I mean, if code is clear like this, you should not need any annotation. If you make your code uh, and just have very unreadable function names and stuff like that, then yes, yeah, sure, you need to annotate that. I think for this, I can get away with not annotating it so far. Unless I'm gonna totally be thinking different the next day. <laughs> so let's test this again. Arivia stands in front of an object she has never seen before. Great. I don't see a tree. Oh, now that I know. know. Duh. I need to change that in my script because there I didn't put my sprite. That's not so hard. We did it pretty okay. Stuff can be logical. Okay, so here we go. Arivia stands in front of an object she has never seen before. Kidoki. There we go, we have a tree. Now that she knows that it is a tree, she can just burn it down. Yay. Hello there, Devro. Welcome, welcome. You're just a little bit on the edge of when I was about to stop streaming, but you're there and that's also fine. I'm happy. I'm, I'm getting the mechanics done that I want to do. Uh, so basically what we talked about yesterday when I started making this, I want to have her not know about certain objects. So for example, in this case, 
she walks up to the box because for her it's just a, a green blob we don't know what it is um so she gets the, the the text of we don't know what this is then i just made a simple object uh, the triangle here which is going to um, to basically t uh, explain to her that that thing indeed is a tree so then the thing changes to a tree because now she can perceive that it is a tree indeed and you will actually see it change into a tree and then you go to the tree and you actually yeah i will show you again that then you get the text that she can burn it down arivia stands in front of an object she has never seen before so here we go three now that she knows that it is a tree she can just burn it down so i'm pretty happy with this progress that's um uh, some of the mechanics already explained i obviously will need to do also audio for the fact uh, when you hit the triangle that um, that object you just may saw it's actually a tree or something like that you know th there's going to be dialogues for that um, i'm, I'm going to have to write those i'm going to have to make sound effects for the dragon walking uh, i'm going to have to make an animation for the dragon walking but i'm already pretty happy and very proud that i made my animation of a dragon first of all i, I drew a dragon and then i animated it also to have an idle animation that i'm pretty proud of with a flapping its wings um, and i think that's pretty cool i, I might even make something when uh, i walk with the with the dragon that because of flapping your wings because i i think i'm going to keep that also in the in the move animation uh, I'm, I might do that she every now and then goes a little bit off of the ground. I have to go off the stream, bye everyone, have a great day. Also, bye Dragon's very good luck with the jam, game, jam project. I hope it goes well. Dragon is not a red dragon, it's an apple dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever kind of dragon it is, it, it will have to learn how to spit fire. So we're also going to have to learn that as well. I might have to make an animation of spitting fire. Oh my goodness, I'm... Not sure if this is going to be just game, game jam material because spitting fire will be quite a thing to do in pixel art but i'm sure it can be done uh, and i have to figure out how to do it and and when i do it then uh, spits apple seeds yeah or it becomes an apple bandit which is a drink <laughs> and yeah of course like i, I said uh, i will have to reposition the tree or make it bigger so that it actually hits the ground when i change it um, I don't know if it's size that makes that happen because it should basically, it could be, uh, I might need to change the center point for that, right? So that it's actually on the bottom. You can do that, right? No. Right, uh, short point. But I think that's the one. So, okay. Pivot. Was that the one? Pivot? I never know which one is what because you have that circle here and I need to um, basically set its pivot point to be in the bottom instead of in the center but I don't know how to change this one because uh, then it would make sense if my um, if it makes more sense to me but maybe let me try it let's see what happens if we change it to a tree this way maybe now it becomes no still is in the top and i don't really know why this is because my my layer mask or my my box collider is still down there but my sprite goes up there couldn't be right Because obviously I can put this down, but right for a point is pivot and not center. It's not like I can just say it's lower and move that thing. Because now if I would say like this, uh, go down, then everything goes down. I don't want that. 
This is something I will have to look into for sure. Because that will totally mess up the sprite. It's just too high. I don't want that. It needs to become lower and fit into that box. So we have the same kind of trigger, same kind of distance. And yes, I could do maybe all of that programmatic programmatically. Jesus Christ, my my English sometimes goes. <laughs> but I shouldn't have to, right? I shouldn't have to. Um, it makes no sense. So there's there's something weird going on there. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm happy with the progress because it's it's quite nice to see that your mechanics are starting to work. With this, I can do a lot of different things that um, actually will come into flourishion, uh, making this game accessible because we already have audio in there. Uh, we have explanations, voiceovers. Um, we can obviously go a little further than that and, and maybe uh, do some environment describing and stuff like that. Um, now it's very small, and that's also something that I can later do in a menu where we can change the settings <clears throat> for interfacing. That would mean, for example, if I go um, or I want to be closer so I can actually see about this, then this ortho size goes more like this, boom, so you actually can see what you're doing. Um, and you can actually um, um, say that, actually can identify that that's a little dragon. Because if you're nearsighted, you would probably think like there's a little dot there in the middle. I have no clue what it is. <laughs> so basically, I will be trying to capture with this game um, blind, nearsighted, and colorblind and just make sure that I test my colorblindness um, there is a place where you do that that's right here and for that I will have to export this one to see if it's still recognizable so I'm going to export here Export as, uh, let's put it a bit bigger so we can actually see that damn thing. And uh, make it a GIF, I guess. Yeah. And export that. But where am I exporting it to? Okay, I'm going to put it here. Fine with me. Okie dokie. Export. Okay. So let's go now to my color blindness simulator. Choose a file. Uh, no, echoes of fire. Let's go to assets, projects, art, player. Should be, yeah, should be player. And then red dragon. If let's see what it says, because here you can, as you can see, there's a few categories above this. You can see uh, how it does against red weak pro. Protanomaly, green week, uh, blue week. So we can see the the difference. Um, yeah, like somebody would probably with this uh, dichromatic view should not be able to see um, that this is actually a red dragon. So if you're red blind, you will never get a red dragon. There's no way. Doesn't matter. It can still be recognized as being a dragon. That's that's the most important part, right? What you want to see is with this colorblind stuff. That, for example, if you have all, only monochromy, uh, achromatosopia, topsia. Wow, Jesus, those words are horrible. What you do is put in code. Let's swap that color with another. Yeah, but if you have monochromacy, monochromacy, you basically would not see any color anyway. So. What is important in these kind of things when it's color blindness that you have is that it's still discernible that this is a dragon. That that's basically what you want to see. Um, and yeah, you will not be able to put. Um, it can be an option. Yeah, yeah. So basically, then then we could do something with that and try to swap that out. But yeah, you'd have to do a lot of different things. With monochromy, that would be really hard. 
<laughs> Somehow use lens to compare with normal view. No lens in person. Anyway, um, I don't know how you technically do this, but probably by messing with pellets. Yeah, mo most likely. And um, as we've already seen in um, here, in Unity, if I, for example, would change this, then you see that the color of the dragon changes. Even though I drew his belly white, if I go red, then the color becomes red also on his belly so so i could play around with this and change him into a different color and 16 colors indeed is even easier but yeah you can you can change that so i'm, I'm not sure if i have to go that far i think most important with color blindness at least at least what i've heard but i'm gonna ask in the discord that they have um, there, there's a Discord for this uh, this this game jam. It's called the Access Reset Game Jam. Um, they have this Discord server, and I can basically show you for a second that there's questions being asked also, um, and people who are judges are also telling about what they're um, wanting to see. Like for example, if you have trouble with uh, with movement, then it's easier for them to use AWSD, which I usually use anyway. Hey, Sundown, thank you so much for the first time chat. Thank you so much. I, I know I've joined you a few times, of course, but it's nice to see you also join my stream. Uh, maybe you were here for a long time. I have absolutely no clue. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm really ch I'm trying to challenge myself by checking these things uh, a few times. So I, I, as far as I know, but I will ask that question in the, in the Discord. Uh, as, oh, commercials. Oh, I'll keep talking anyway. Um, let's see how long it takes. <laughs> Won't have to be too long, I think. It doesn't say that I have ads, which is a little bit stupid. Let me know when you're back, Quantulu. There's nothing wrong with commercials, or I guess for people who have it. I guess it's a long commercial. <laughs> um, Anyway, I, I can ask that, I guess, and um, I hope you guys are going to be back by now. I don't know how long the commercials are this time. Uh, but one thing that I can do is put, of course, into the, the Discord server that they have for this game jam. Um, if catering for color blindness basically means that it should still be discernible, no matter which kind of color blindness you have or if that means that we need to cater for making it a different color. Welcome back, Patrick. I guess you passed the commercials then. <laughs> so that is something interesting, obviously, because I also don't exactly know when you're um, making your game really perfect for people who are color blind. I think from what I've heard, and maybe I'm completely wrong, uh, making it work for colorblind means that you uh, that you make sure that no matter if you're colorblind or not, you can discern what kind of thing that is. Because I have seen some images and also in pixel art where people make art that if you have, for example, red blind or pro proton protonopia you would not be able to tell what that thing is. Because it basically just takes out one of the colors, the main color, and you, it's too close to each other. And then, yeah, you basically have no clue that there is a difference in anything. So it just looks like a little block. So stuff like that. But maybe I'm wrong. So I'm going to have to throw that into the into their Discord server and see what they say about it. But we made quite some progress. 
I would say. I made sure that I will save it. Let me also right now check in my code and my art because we actually made quite a progress and I don't want to lose it. Fire. Always do that. Comma instead of dot. Yes. Commit. Edit a dragon instead of a capsule. Uh, edit code with the uh, functionality. And work. You don't get any ads. That kind of defies the entire reason to have have subscriptions that the city was nice enough to give today. Um, he had to go though, but very nice. Uh, my first subscriber. I'm very very proud. Uh, I had a subscriber before once, but it was basically one month and then it stopped. <laughs> it's like obviously you want to have uh, some more people subscribe, but yeah, you know. It's not always possible, and it's also fine. I don't want people to, to do what they cannot afford, so I always tell them that, like, if you can afford it, yeah, sure, do, do it, and please do it. If you have Amazon Prime and you haven't used it this month yet, sure, please use that to subscribe to me. It helps my channel. It helps making my game, and especially with, uh, with the amount of money that it might need, will need most likely. It's very nice if people sometimes feel that they want to help you with that and then every now and then i will have to should i turn it off no it's okay i, I don't want you to um, to have to suffer commercials I, I don't want anyone to have to suffer commercials the only thing is obviously those commercials give like a few cents of money and in the end it will hopefully turn into fifty dollars and the fifty dollars will come into me but yeah i mean I'm not going to tell you to turn off an ad blocker. That that makes no sense for me. And those ads that you get are usually very annoying and constantly the same, no matter on which channel you are. So, no, don't 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 do that. Not for me. It, it's fine. I mean, obviously, every channel and every uh, game maker will want some money, uh, and but it's not that important. I I will have my sponsored streams every now and then, and those sponsored streams will. When I get a nice opportunity again, I will probably do one again, and I will ask you guys again to play a game that is in the sponsored stream, either on PC or on mobile, depending on which one I would get. And with that, um, reach certain goals. And once you reach, reach those goals, um, it earns money. I mean, I did it before. Hey, welcome back, Vibes Makes Games. I am I was surprised that I'm still here myself, though, by the way. <laughs> Usually, I'm not streaming that long. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm happy with where I'm going. Uh, it might look the same. Uh, sorry, I was doing something. Why do you feel the need to say sorry? It's fine. I mean, life goes first. I'm already happy that people are finding and uh, wanting to make the time to watch me make this game. Uh, or my own game that I normally make. Um, but I, I think also what I'm doing now with this game jam is going to be so useful to, to, to know this and to have done this before when I'm making Gaia. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with what I'm doing so far. Um, just to show you Vibes Makes Games, if you were not here for a while, you probably haven't seen this yet. Or maybe you have in the background, I don't know. But now we can, we have a little bit of an animation. We we have this part where we still don't know that that's a tree. Never seen before. Never seen before. Then we go to this object here that will tell us, oh, it's a tree. And there you go. Now that she knows that it is a tree, she can just burn it down. So that's my mechanic that I was talking about yesterday, functional. And with this, we can actually start making levels. So I've proven to myself that I can do this. I just cooked right now. I cooked lunchtime. I cleaned plates, forks, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, stuff that has to be done right. Um, the only thing that I was not happy with yet, and I was looking at that a little bit ago, is why my tree is now floating into the air. Look, it's just, it's there. I swapped it over. It works, but 
shouldn't be up there. I'm going to have to look at that. I'm pretty sure you can do something with the bright sword point. Should be pivoting. Yeah, you will play as the dragon. And basically, it's like a coming of age story where, um, as the dragon, you have no idea yet what is the things that you have in the world. So, um, first thing first, you come ag across a green blob. You don't know what that green blob is supposed to be. Uh, so you have to figure it out by going to another thing that will tell you. So the thing that you just saw is a tree. Okay. So you go back. Now that you know that it's a tree, you can burn it down. So stuff like that, right? Um, now I changed it also to be a trigger. I probably will not make it a trigger. Uh, but I probably will uh, make it another um, collision, just normal collision. And then tell the player when they bump into it that you now need to press a certain button to spit fire and burn down the tree. Something like that. Um, and those kind of things is what I, uh, I want to try and do with this game. Make it simple. Make it explainable. Make it triggered with audio. Uh, set some options so that I can make the camera closer make interfaces bigger and stuff like that. I'm going to have to tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak until I'm going crazy. But that is what I'm trying to do. And that's what I'm hope, hoping to achieve with this uh, in the short amount of time that I will have. So I'm pretty happy. Um, obviously, might have been able to do more, but we had some super fun discussions and talks that were definitely not something I would have wanted to miss. So. Um, <laughs> I I think I will leave it at this. It's uh, 10 minutes before 11 here. Tomorrow I have to get up again at 5 a.m. So I don't think it's a smart idea to keep going forever. I wasn't going to stream first. I figured I have some time, so why not? And I did, and I liked it. I'm very happy that I did. So I want to thank you all for being here today. I'm going to have a look right now to see who I could raid out to. There's plenty of people that I could write, write out to. Um, and I think I will go for Irish John Games, one of my favorite people to write out to. If you don't know Irish John uh, Games yet, then you should. Irish John Games is amazing. And uh, one of those people who has uh, who's making an incredible game. He's been signed by Microprose. He's making a game about piracy. Rise of Piracy is what it's called. So... You definitely want to see him if you don't know him yet. So I'm going to type that out right now. Raid Irish John Games. So here we go. Posture check. Okay. You're right. I should watch my posture a little bit more. I need a better chair. Because <laughs> uh, I usually don't sit straight in this one. That's um, something I recently figured out as well. So thank you again uh, for being here today. Um, let's see um, if uh, Irish John Games is doing something nice today. He usually streams like almost every day. Stay safe, be cool, stay cool. Bye bye. Um, so, thank you everybody for being here today, and I hope to see you again on the next stream. Bye.